we can use your diet, for example, somebody who is aware of the ideal way we're supposed to be eating. And again, you've been in this world for decades. How much of the diet should be ruminant in animals? I might not be the best example, Jesse, because while, I, while I'm happy to say this is what is ideal, this is what a given human being should strive towards and should probably do to ideally support their health, longevity, etc., I adhere to that myself between 90 to 95% across time. There are periods where I will go off piste because I'm a human being and a hedonist. Okay. Ideally, what a person should do is what I do most of the time, which is probably 80% of everything I eat is the muscle meat of beef, not organs, the muscle meat and the associated fat, plus or minus butter, usually plus butter, salt, water, that's pretty much it. So 20% of everything I eat is not beef, muscle meat, and associated fat or butter. So that's pork, fish, chicken, lamb, everything else is a, a very small percentage of my diet. And when you have those other meats, do you feel like it's less nutritious, like you're taking a hit on your nutrition and doing it so you have some variety? How do you look at that? Not really. Um, I don't feel any different having eaten fish or chicken or pork. I mean, lamb is another ruminant. It's just not a large one. So it's very similar to beef in terms of its... its... The thing that differs between the different animals is actually the, the fatty acid profile of of the meats and fats. And I actually don't think this is hugely important. I wouldn't suggest that you base your diet on chicken because of the way chickens are reared and antibiotics and all the kind of nonsense around that. I wouldn't suggest that you base your diet on fish and seafood because of mercury poisoning, other heavy metals and things. Um, but... If you were slightly more than 20% and slightly less than 80%, I probably wouldn't be asking for your card back and striking you off the list of genuine carnivores. He never really was a carnivore. He did it wrong, Jesse. That's just a little joke. All right, so we know now what to eat, but let's take this even farther and talk about what the animal ate. So there's you know organic chicken, pasture-raised chicken. How important is it to know... And we can use this with any animal, you know, when it comes to fish, wild caught, beef, grass fed, grass finished. When it comes to nutrition and the benefits we're going to get from that, how important is it we look back at what the animals ate? If a person says to me, I cannot afford grass finished, grass reared beef, I can afford the feedlot stuff. I would still vastly sooner see that person eat that than any amount of plant material at all. Now, for, I for ideal situation, for choice, if you have the choice, if you can access grass, fed grass, finished beef, and you can afford that, I would say for preference, do that. But I wouldn't die in a ditch over eating grass, uh, non-grass finished or, or whatever. There is a slight difference in the, in the fatty acid makeup, but I really don't think it's the major concern that going, oh, we'll sort it, then I'm not going to eat meat because I can't get grass-fed, so I'm going to eat plants instead. That would be a mistake. Okay. In New Zealand, we're lucky. We, we only have grass, red, grass-finished meat. There's nothing else to be had, um, probably because we're a lot closer to the equator than the North American continent, for example. Um, so it's just not even an issue here. Okay, taking that even another layer further... What about meat that is raised on a farm versus wild meat and people that are hunting or getting meat from somebody that's out actually hunting? And then another layer to that is looking at the actual animal reading. I mean, there's something like a deer that's more, I would say, from my knowledge at least, is more likely to be a natural meat versus a cow that has likely been bred from another animal. To what we have today. The example there is an interesting one because if given a choice between cattle 
and um, deer meat, venison, as the staple, I'm going beef every single time because venison is very, very lean and and there's not enough fat there to sustain a human in good health status if that's all they were eating or if that's mostly what they were eating. Um, cattle tend to carry much more fat and our nutrition really has come largely from cattle for several thousand years around the agrarian revolution. Prior to that, it was actually mammoth mostly, uh, and mammoth is a slightly different beast again. Um, I mean, they're even more fatty, for example, but, yeah, it's 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 the best... It seems to be the best in terms of what's biochemically suited to the human physiology, not because of some miracle, but precisely because that's what we have been eating. And so our bodies have adapted to eating that to optimise to that diet. To which a person might say, well, I could just eat a vegan diet then and my body would optimise to that over time, wouldn't it? No, we're not talking about optimising an individual over a year or two. We're talking about optimizing the genes of the species by selecting for and against. So we're talking more geological time here. We're not talking a few years of doing something. All right. Coming back to the original point we were making, I said there was a couple of nuances I wanted to dig into. The other one is the fact that you said muscle meat two different times, which means that you're not having organs. And a lot of times in the health and wellness space, those are prized and people talk about the health benefits and how nutrient dense those are. So talk about your feeling on organ meats. Organ meats are completely and utterly unnecessary in the human diet. Do some of the organs contain some things that are touted as positive health supporting things? Sure. Does that mean we should eat those things on balance? No, not when you understand everything else that's in them. My main bugbear with with organs is liver, particularly. Other organs, brain, spinal cord, bit of this here and there, you know, whatever else. Again, I'm not going to die in a ditch over that and say, give us your card back, you're doing it wrong. But if you're piling in an unnaturally large proportion of liver, you are asking for a problem because you are not designed for that. And liver contains some good things, absolutely. And that's the things that these less than ideally educated people are putting forward as the reason you should eat liver, forgetting entirely the flip side of that coin, whereas, well, what about all the toxins in liver that will do you damage? A lot of people say, oh, you're talking about vitamin A, aren't you? Not really. I'm not convinced about vitamin A toxicity. I'll tell you what I am convinced by, though, is copper toxicity. And the level of copper that you will find in liver is vast. And that can really cause you very, very serious problems. Okay. So given everything we've said to this point, 80% of your diet is beef. Would somebody be able to thrive, would you say, on a 100% beef diet? Absolutely, without question. Now... The caveat would be, where is that person coming from? How is their health when they started? What have they been eating? And how sensibly, how slowly did they transition their diet from A to B? If you get nothing else from this discussion today, people, if you want to change your diet from anything to anything else, do not do that overnight. I'm going carnivore tomorrow. I'm going vegan tomorrow. I'm going omnivore tomorrow. Whatever. No. Change your diet over six to eight weeks from what it is to what you want it to be. You must allow your microbiome to adjust to the change in food supply. Otherwise, all hell will break loose at some point, either immediately or on a delayed reaction. And then you'll turn around and blame the diet when it wasn't the diet that caused the problem. It was the fact that you changed your diet too quickly, often some months ago before you actually get the the disaster. So that's the caveat I would throw at that. But can a person thrive on nothing but the muscle, meat, and associated fat of 
let's say beef, yes, without any question. If you enjoyed that clip, press here for the full episode. I'll see you over there. Insulin resistance is a normal, natural, indicated and useful biological process. It is not a pathology and it is not the cause of diabetes. The diet that these so-called scientists...